Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. This is Sub LBC here doing another video episode of Growing for Freedom. And in this video, we're gonna be spending a little bit of time here over in the new 4,000 watt uh, mothering room in which we've got 16 SFVOG mother plants in seven gallon pots being illuminated by four 1,000 watt uh, setups uh, featuring adjust wings and double-ended bulbs, which are a new thing that I've been really excited about. Been having some really great results actually with the double-ended over at the Money Maker for all you guys that have been following along. But unfortunately, this garden has not been doing quite as well as the Money Maker as of yet. So in this video, we're just going to talk about some of the trials and tribulations uh, in one of the gardens that I'm probably having the most issues with right now. You know, I got to say that pretty much all the other gardens that we have in operation are just working splendidly. So this is the one that really requires a lot more of my focus. Uh, so first things first guys, one of the main issues that we had with these plants initially was it really did take them a long time to become root bound. Um, even though the, the plants were watered a lot initially, uh, they would become droopy usually within 24 hours or so. And that's normal you know, in the first three, maybe as often as five days. Uh, but once you get outside of five days, you really would expect your plants to root effectively through the new medium. And that wasn't really going on. And I really do think that a lot of it had to do with the fact that, you know, obviously these are Coca Tech liner baskets. Um, it, I believe it will take your plants a little bit longer to get their roots established if they're in a basket versus, you know, being obviously in cocoa already or being in a, like a Rockwell block, you know, four inch or six inch. You know, generally once you take off the Rockwell covers, the, the roots are immediately exposed to the new me medium, so they break out real quick. And in the case of these plants specifically, um, the roots had not penetrated the liner baskets much, if at all, at time of transplant. So they were still in the process of working through the Rockwell blocks. And to make matters worse, we were also using the larger size Rockwell blocks. And I think that it requires a little more effort um, you know, from the plants to root through the larger blocks than it does through the smaller ones. And yeah, I'm even having some, uh, I don't even know what the larger blocks are necessarily even made for. Probably not for a liner basket, in the way that I'm using them, maybe if you're gonna run like a whole tub of plants, you might wanna consider using the bigger blocks, I suppose. But um, yeah, so it kinda hurt the plants um, initially. But you know, that's not really something that's too difficult to overcome. But what I do think really did cause a lot of problems is the fact that this cocoa, guys, is probably the most gnat infested cocoa I've ever seen before in my life. And it is definitely not something that the plants already had initially when they were in the hydroponic environment. I mean, to have this level of gnat infestation present, you uh, you know would have to have a, a large or very noticeable amount of adults present to lay all those eggs. And we didn't have any of that going on. You know, the plants that were in the flood tables at the time were very clean. It's a, a very clean and well-managed garden. But the moment these things went into cocoa, within just a few days, we started seeing adult gnat activity and then, uh, you know, like a week and a half in, not even two weeks in, I mean, we're like ex seeing explosive gnat populations. So this is definitely something that was brought in. And we were using a new type of cocoa. This is actually the, uh, I don't know, it's called your Mother Earth Cocoa. I, I think I talked about this a little bit before in the past. You know, this was like on a special that I'd gotten from my hydro store. And uh, for whatever reason, they gave it to Green Door at a huge discount. And you should always be wary when uh, they do something like that. But, you know, it's a decent cocoa. RHP certified, whatever the fuck that means. I guess something of a, you know, an OM, OMRI equivalent certification. Something that the Botanic Care Cocoa Grow does not have, I believe. But um, yeah, this did come from NGW, um, Sunlight Supply. And like I had mentioned in previous videos, and I, I believe this information is correct, you know, all of their bag mediums are stored outdoors, and that just opens them up to invaders. And there are some people that had commented, excuse me, that, uh, you know, there might be something that's you know, more of an issue that's dealt with at the source, you know, where the, the cocoa was initially harvested. And I can't say for certain. The only way I'd be able to test that is to use like another distributor um, that I know for certain houses their shit indoors or, uh, you know, go with Canna or, you know, something where I know that the quality controls are really good. But, uh, you know, it's not that I'm not used to dealing with gnat infestation, it does happen. But I think in this case, you know, uh, the reason why this particular cocoa was discounted is no one was buying it because it was like an unknown brand. So it just sat outside forever, accumulated all these bugs, and then they just discounted it to get rid of a pallet or whatever. You know, and now I'm forced to deal with the issue. So uh, it's kind of unfortunate, you know, if that is the case because it means I, you know, if it does turn out that the outdoor storage of the cocoa is causing this issue, then I'm not going to get cocoa from them anymore. You know, I'll find a new distributor. I will get it elsewhere. And I know that I've uh, received comments in the past about, you know, why don't I use can of cocoa? And the main reason why is because none of the hydro stores in downtown carry canna. Uh, canna has some weird, 
you know, rules about they don't want too many shops carrying their stuff within a, a specific vicinity of one another, which is absolutely ludicrous, ridiculous, considering, you know, how many growers there are in the downtown LA area. But, you know, for some, I don't know, politicized corporate bureaucratic reason, they just don't want to uh, give it to too many stores in a, in a close area. And there are no stores in my immediate vicinity that carry this stuff. Uh, the most recent that did was Better Grow Hydro in Bell, but they've long since closed their doors, and I don't even know if their retail shop in uh, Pasadena is even open anymore. And I'm surely not going to go all the way the fuck out to Pasadena to pick up fucking you know 11 bags of cocoa on short notice. That's just ridiculous, especially when I have hydro stores right nearby. So, um, Canna, if you guys are watching this, you know, drop the bullshit. Uh, pick at least one of two really great downtown stores, and there's two really decent ones, and uh, get your products down here. You know, I'm sure a lot of people other than myself will want to use them. But uh, in the meantime, you know, this is an experiment we're going to have to continue on further down the road. You know, find another way of getting cocoa, uh, you know, contacting the wholesaler, making sure they store it indoors, and then from there ordering it and see if we have the same problems. And, you know, I do use cocoa enough to be able to tell. In fact, uh, a good test would be on the, uh, the next vertical transplant that we're going to be doing here in a few weeks. So enough to talk about talking where we think the problems are coming from. Uh, let's talk about how we're going to deal with it. So um, there are a few things I like to do uh, with dealing with gnats. And this is going to be pretty interesting because, you know, we're going to be pulling out all the stops. Uh, when we have gnat infestations that are this active, we really do need to, like, you know, go the extra mile in eliminating them. So um, we start off by using the Merit 2F. I'll bring it out here to the light. Um, so you guys can see it here a little bit better. This is the uh, Amidacloprid Concentrate. And uh, normally I would run, you know, one half of a fluid ounce per 55-gallon reservoir or so. But in this case, because there are so many active gnats, we are going to go uh, 0.5 fluid ounces on the smaller 40-gallon res, which is what I use to feed these plants. Uh, but when we do run the higher strengths of the Amidacloprid Concentrate, um, we're not going to be running any nutrients at all whatsoever. Just the straight Amidacloprid by itself with pH water. So I'm going to start and, and just basically flood all those plants down. And uh, if we do get any kind of runoff coming through the bottoms of the saucers, of course, we'll go ahead and vacuum that out. But we want to get that um, you know, insecticide in or pesticide in the plants as much as possible. You know, This is you know, the first and foremost most important thing. Now, it probably will not take me the entire contents of the 40-gallon reservoir to saturate all these plants. So. Um, what I will do then is whatever water is remaining left in the reservoir, we'll go ahead and top it off with fresh water, and we'll go ahead and introduce nutrients. And then on Saturday, when uh, Danko G gets back in, I'm going to have her mix one fluid ounce of the um, Azimax into a one-gallon jug. That's generally the mix rate for doing drench with, with Azimax, one fluid ounce per gallon. And then uh, she'll just fill up jug after jug after jug. It didn't go through and, and saturate the tops of the plants. You know, probably giving uh, each one roughly, I don't know, a half to three quarters of a gallon per. Probably not a full gallon per, because uh, by the time Saturday rolls around, there'll probably still be a lot of water in these plants, and they won't be able to take that much without flooding. But I was thinking about just taking a whole bottle of Azimax like that and just dumping it into the reservoir, but the, uh, the bottle that I have right now is not full, so I would be running it at, at a little bit less of a strength than what I would like to do. But in the future, I might just do that, you know, if I have a problem this severe. But uh, since we're going to be on short notice, I figure we'll just do it jug by jug. Um, it will be the most efficient way to use the Azimax because, you know, dumping a whole bottle in is kind of wasteful. But uh, it would definitely guarantee that the, the root area would be completely dealt with. So uh, moving forward, there are things that more things that have to be done. Obviously, um, we'll come in and uh, have Dinko G eliminate all the bottom areas of the plants and then go ahead and hang up the, uh, the sticky traps. And these are the ones that I like to use uh, from Seabright Laboratories. And they're really great. You use turn them inside out with a little uh, twisty tie. But you want to make sure to eliminate all these lower areas of the plants first because those leaves will get uh, you know, all caught up in the, uh, in the traps. And then they don't really work as well when the, the leaves are all caught up in them. So that way we'll deal with the adults. So we've got the adults dealt with. We've got the drench dealt with. Um, we might have to give them additional imidacloprid spikers uh, moving forward over the next two to three weeks. Although on a 40 gallon reservoir, we will not be doing the full 0.5 fluid ounces. You'll probably work with um, dosages of about 0.25 or so with feedings though, you know what I'm saying? And I do that a couple more times. And uh, at that point, we probably should uh, eliminate the nap problems more or less for uh, the remainder of the uh, lives of these mother plants. And hopefully they'll look a lot better too because 
you know, it has been difficult, like I said, with the rooting. Uh, they've also not really been the healthiest in the world, and I really do think that, you know, the gnat infestation is responsible. You know, those things are really going after the root zones and to the point that where the plants are slightly stressed. But uh, once these things are eliminated, I think we'll be doing really well, and uh, we should be able to start taking the uh, cuttings on these plants on Monday. I had initially planned to do it on Friday, tomorrow, but because of the issues I've been having, you know, I just want to go ahead and, and delay it a little bit, allow the plants to recover from all the you know, introductions of pesticides and sexicides or what have you. Uh, but come Monday, yeah, we'll be able to start chopping into these things and uh, have them on, uh, you know, full strength lighting at all times. You know, right now we're running it on reduced mode uh, because, again, you know, the introduction of pesticides into the system. You know, you really do want to take things very easy on your plants. You know, bring the lighting systems down. Um, you know, make sure the room, uh, room temperatures are cool. The environments are very friendly. And then, um, you know, do what you're going to do. And uh, yeah, over the course of the next two to three weeks, I think we'll have it finally dealt with. And uh, these plants will be looking, hopefully, a lot more like the ones uh, that are, look, are in the moneymaker. Because, man, guys, those, those mothers on the last round were just absolutely huge. And I believe that the girls actually pulled down 520 cuttings uh, just yesterday from that garden. So, you know, really, really happy to see uh, that big, huge wave of production, um, especially when we're able to do it once every 10 days. And we definitely need to match those results here. So in any case, guys, that is it for this video update. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them. Uh, next video update was going to be from the adjacent nursery, but to be honest, guys, it's just fucking absolutely boring over there. There's been nothing going on. Uh, they only have six mother plants under 1,000 watts. They're looking really good. Uh, the transplants that we've done, the SFUOG transplants, got off to a rough start, but they're looking a lot better too. And, you know, again, not too terribly exciting. I mean, Blue Dream clones in there, I mean, you know, whoop de doo right? Uh, we'll probably actually uh, get to work on the BHO vid. You know, you guys have been patiently waiting for that, and I'll probably get to work on that, maybe sneak in an update uh, in between. But uh, that's pretty much it, guys, for this video. Thanks all for watching, and I will see you all next time.